something called AFOL Adult Fans of LEGO. Um, it, it is kind of a, a, a strange thing because when you describe to people that you are an adult LEGO builder, they're not quite sure what to think about that at first. Uh, they kind of think, do you build sets or, you know, how does that work? Uh, then when they get to see the kind of things that you're doing, uh, you kind of see the jaw drop and they're like, oh, you know, they, they get it. Uh, adult fan of Lego. Well, it's, pr and it's pronounced awful, which I think is hysterical. It, to me, it means I was smart enough not to sell at least one of the toys that I had when I was a kid. Because there are all these people who regret that they sold their Transformers or their He-Man or their G.I. Joe. And this was the one that I hung on to. Because I was like, you know, 25 years from now, I get nostalgic. Um, they'll still fit together with the new ones. Welcome to my Lego room. We, we haven't wasted the money, we've invested the money. And uh, I think that's, that's one thing about the Lego hobby that, that I try to instill upon younger people. And I say, well, we have over a million pieces. And they say, how do you get that many pieces? Well, we don't smoke. We don't generally drink. We don't spend money on things that we get nothing from. And that's, that's really where it is. Uh, if, you're, if you're just spending money to spend money, you don't have anything left over. If you spend money to invest, you got something left over. Um, yeah, I have a rough idea, and it's scary. I'm figuring probably a couple hundred thousand dollars over a 35 year period of time. With the last 10 to 15 years, our budget, if you can call it that, has been in the neighborhood of $500 to $1,000 a month. It's my escape. I come out here and I just get to imagine a world inside my head and I let that travel down my arms through the brick and see what comes out of it. I've actually had a big love of Battletech. I used to play Battletech through high school, miniatures wargaming, and just something about that concept of big giant clunky robots doing battle was just awesome to me. So I just started making mecha. I wanted to see how I could make the parts work because Lego isn't very... Um, very intuitive to say organic structures or things which are meant to bend and move. Uh, this is again before Bionicle and uh, it was really a challenge to make it work which of course also appealed to me. Oh cool, you're not supposed to be able to do this. Well let's figure out how we can make it work. Uh, one thing I'm really known for is doing mechs where it's a reverse knee configuration or like a chicken walker. Uh, that was always a challenge from the beginning because, you know, Lego is meant to go straight up and down. You put a bend in it, particularly backwards, it doesn't really like to stay all that well. As mecha building, one of the very intricate things about it is you're constantly stressing the ability of the parts, you know? You have uh, like an arm of a mech and it'll be so heavy, right? Well, if you make it too big for the connection point, it'll keep falling off because the Lego doesn't have enough grab or clutch to hold on to it. And so there's always this element of a challenge. What can I do? What can I get away with? And, uh, you know, you have a vision of what you want to do. And then the next step is, how do you get there? And that's, that's what really does it for me. I'll, I'll see something or I, I have lots of ideas of things I want to build. And my limitation is uh, the actual brick I do have and the capacity of Lego to get that done. Oh, let's see, no. No, it's not a kit. No, it's not for sale. No, there's no instructions. Yes, I did it myself. <laughs> I definitely had my time when I was in denial and 
If, you're, if your peculiarities can survive your adolescent years into college, you're going to be okay. And usually they start to flower in college, and that was the same with me. So by the time I got out of college and into young adulthood, yeah, I was a Lego guy and everybody knew it. So I was then the guy that, you know, oh, he does, he's into Lego, you want to give him your Lego from your childhood? And it's like, yes. <laughs> so I collected a few collections like that, and, and that's when it all started. I'm a Lego certified professional, an LCP is the, the little designation that we've given it. And all that means is I am a builder and a business person. So I do Lego based public events. So I am certified by the Lego company to do that and to use the Lego brand. It basically means that I have a business to business relationship with the Lego company, but I'm not an employee and uh, I don't speak for the company, I don't represent the company at all. And that's, that's basically as simple as that. I love doing the public events. Uh, the thing I enjoy most about public events is the excitement that people have. Um, like I said before, no one really has a, a negative, or an overly negative, let's say, view of Lego. And for almost everybody, grandparents right down to toddlers, they have a positive memory or specific positive memories about Lego. And uh, they share that with me instantly as though I've never heard anything story like theirs before and I love hearing them and you know you even though you've heard the same thing a thousand times I still love it and then there's the excitement of seeing what I built of course there's no question it's an ego stroking thing if you have a creation there and people go oh that's so cool how did you make that you know that's fun <laughs> Um, and what defines us? Oh my goodness, um, our love for the brick. Um, we are just fascinated with the uh, amazing possibilities and the, the, the chance to get our imagination in tangible form. Oh gosh, let's see now. Uh, 21 years I've been building. I think maybe a little bit early on. There'd be, there'd be a few times where I'd be buying a huge quantity of Lego and I never said it was for someone else. I'd say it was for myself and people kind of give me a you know, funny look sometimes maybe, but I think not to, never to the point where I was ashamed of it. I mean, it's, it's I, I think it's a, another art medium. But um, overall, no, I don't think I've, I've really ever been embarrassed about it. community aspect, the online community aspect, Flickr is incredible, I think, because of the interaction with each other, uh, commenting on certain way they, cert, uh, someone built something, how they, that technique they use. Um, it's an incredible tool for the AFOLs, I think. Phenomenal tool. I think it's helped the, the uh, community or the, the hobby grow in leaps and bounds, just because so many people now can participate in it.
Yeah, I think so. I think most of us have uh, uh, some sort of a, not, if not a, a, an educated technical background, a definite technical background. Um, I, I perceive most of, uh, most of the people there are, are fairly intelligent. Um, they seem to be mostly easygoing. Um, so yeah, I think there's an engineering kind of a personality involved. But there's a lot of artistic abilities, which for me, I envy a lot. And it's just cleaning because it goes upside down so pieces really don't get jammed in there. We're doing the draft. Oh, they are doing the draft. Well, we're going to do the draft. Well, I know. You may just say, hey. I want it to be a group of people who get together and talk about Lego. I don't think anybody should be running Sea Lug. It should be just a, a Lego users group, a meeting, a, a base of, of getting together and sharing. I always need these. I don't care. Well, I do. I do. Smooth stuff. Oh, lots of okay. stuff. Sure, I get that. Okay, lean on your back. Do it. You want to see the archive? It's not well organized at this point. It's fairly well organized, just not very well set. Now it's 20 years ago. I started doing a thing, I, I started looking at the elements and finding out about older sets and older pieces and said, I really want to try and collect all the different elements that exist. And I mean back to when Lego was first being molded as the automatic binding brick back in 1949 or 50 or whatever it was. And I've got bricks back that far. I've even got Lego items further back than that. So I'm, I'm a, a, a collector like nobody's business. So when new sets come out, I'm going, oh, there's a new piece, and there's a new piece, and there's a new piece, and oh, but this set has three of those new, you know, three different kinds of new pieces, and that one only has one, and I can get that, you know. So I don't try to buy every set, which a lot of people confuse when I say I'm trying to get every piece. I really like to try to bend brick. I like to make round, and uh, sometimes you have to sculpt that. I build things that are different. Um, sometimes, often, not complete. I'll just kind of fiddle around a little bit, put some brick, bricks together and see if I can come up with an idea that might spark me to build something. So it's more of a tinkering. I do a lot of tinkering. And during that time, I'm sort of thinking, well, let's see, what, what kind of piece might go here? What kind of piece might go there? It's not a, there's not a lot of pre-planning in my building. And gray to gray. I'm trying not to lose balance here. The whole thing's got to stand on that one because the wheel isn't going to support it. So it became a it became something I have to rebuild. My collection I started building and collecting 35 years ago, and it's only till nine or 10 years ago that I found out there are other people out there who also build. So that's 25 years by myself with Lego. So I don't think there's a there's a definition of what makes a, an adult fan of Lego. I think it's just um, you you're an adult and you like to build with Lego, and it's okay. You can go home, I bought all the good bricks already. You did? Yeah. And the hag is still just awesome. I, I look for parts. I don't really care much about sets, but I, I do look for parts. I look for, you know, whatever I don't have. It is kind of funny that, you know, I've built these countless cars and uh, as it turns out, I don't have a car myself. I live uh, right here in the heart of Seattle. There was just never a need for it. Like th this guy right here, if you could see him from a distance, but this, what's it called? It's like a one by three curved slope. You know, this is my roof lines. This is the siding of my cars. You know, this is how everything gets all nice and curvy. And this is probably, you know, the best invention I think that they've come out with in recent history. 
my theory is there are a lot of engineers here and a lot of computer programmers and a lot of gamers and that just seems to go hand in hand with Lego building it's you know it's a hobby it's something to do with your hands it's engineering it's programming it's a lot of that not when I do it but <laughs> it is you know and uh, I think that's why there's there's so many in the Northwest uh, for I don't know whatever reason I, I do kind of like the 50s um, that theme seems to just be reoccurring in in my artwork you know there's always exotic places and cars you know with fins that go on for miles and uh, just kind of makes sense that that world brought itself into Lego as well. You know, as a kid, uh, you know, sure, I think I was just like any other. You know, I was building dinosaurs and spaceships and, you know, things like that. Uh, I think I was a very kind of laid-back kid, kind of thoughtful. Um, I was quiet a lot. I, you know, enjoyed just kind of sitting down, drawing, uh, studying people, you know. And then that kind of took me into, a, into my later life as well. So I do just kind of approach it differently. I approach it definitely as an artist. Um, as a result of that, I'm, I'm aware that I'm not a very good mechanic or a good engineer. Uh, sometimes I can't get two gears together without grinding them. Uh, so I have a hard time with that aspect. But in terms of just kind of visually different and visually striking, you know, it is something I could definitely pull off. And, and it's all and it's all a show, you know. But I, I like to pretend, you know, that they're geeks and I'm not. You know, I'm a, I'm the cool car guy. You know, I'm I'm the badass. You know, I'm I you know I'm the artist, but uh, I'm a geek too. It's just a different kind of geek. Uh, nerd hobby number seventeen C, swords, uh, narrow blade, uh, hand and half. You can get a second hand on this pretty good. Uh, high carbon steel not stainless so uh, hence the oil cloth uh, and uh, sharp enough to accidentally cut open a box of Legos don't ask me how I know that uh, dorkdom has has gone up in uh, gone up in popularity there's freedom in being old enough not to care all my other hobbies video games um, role-playing games we have a Dungeons and Dragons group that's what we're currently playing, who comes over every, uh, usually every other week, because we have jobs and stuff. Uh, we can't play four times a week for four hours like we used to. We were playing the same online video game and going through divorces at the same time. And so, you know, two desperate souls reaching out in the night. Oh, please. Okay, fighting crime and cracking fart jokes. Um, <laughs> So I, I build very organically, <laughs> bugs, um, in that I have a shape I want to achieve. And so I'll often build this incredibly fragile skeleton and then, then go put in cross beams so I can get that shape. Uh, it's kind of a long process. I, I'm really blown away by people who can build, like, like have this intricate shape and just build it from the ground up sturdy and done. And not everybody can do that, but there are people who do that and they drive me crazy. But yeah, I build like this. I wanted a, you know, a big high altitude bomber that was shaped like a moth. Here's the payload specialist. Breakcon's where you make friends, where you show off what you built, where you bring all your stuff, you see everything you've been looking on online. Yeah, friends is the biggest thing you take away, always. Oh, my God.
I didn't expect uh, 52 bucks last I counted. This was a big collaborative effort. We just asked everybody to make a bug and bring it. Oh, you just, uh, there are questions well, you'll get. That. How long did it take you to build? Yeah. The, the one that always is kind of a compliment and not at the same time is, is that a kit? Yeah, is that a set? Because on the one hand, they think it's professionally done, and on the other hand, you're like, no, it's not a kit, I made it. Yeah, but that's so. <laughs> Those are vintage. Yeah. Ooh! I don't have an, many of the yellow ones. I got a bag of black and blue octagonal mix, even the S curves, oh, yeah. for 10 bucks, and the bag was like this size. Nice. Real or fake? Fake. I've been building with Lego for probably all my life. Probably since I was three, maybe. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people tell me my style is really whimsical. It's really uh, kind of out there. I like it. It's nice to know that I have a style and people can recognize your work. So here I have my old gray truck. It is a half-track military style truck to fight the zombies. It's got solar panels on top as a supplementary power source, too. Okay, my next one is the octopus. The main body here is actually made out of an inside-out tire, and I've got the eyes are also inside-out tires, and the pupils are Sandy's bubble helmets from the SpongeBob rocket set. Uh, the tentacles are from a, a creator set, I believe, a, a functioning creator set that came with a motor. Uh, so I bought eight of those, and I use them as tentacles. No, no, I don't know anyone who likes Lego, so going to these conventions is a great way to meet fellow enthusiasts. Okay. All right, Heather, it is. There isn't a lot of time to how long it takes to do this. It's whoever gets there first wins. It's awesome to see where BrickCon is today, how it's grown, and the work that Wayne Hussey's put into it is just phenomenal. I, I'm so immensely proud of, of BrickCon, and uh, it's a privilege to be able to go every year and just see, just see the awesomeness of BrickCon. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, mostly that goes with my uh, coworkers. Most often, a lot of them will tease me. You know, you still play with kids' toys, and uh, a lot of people have an interest in it. It's amazing what can be done with Lego, and it's always fun sharing that with people and trying to expose people to it. Again, the Lego hobby is about me. I do Lego because I love it. Other people don't have to understand it or accept it, and people that don't or aren't going to accept it or understand it, that's fine. I don't care. I love playing with Lego. That's all that matters. Our beloved sound. <laughs> I think we have a winner. <laughs> That's not even all anchored down properly. That's a very good sign. <laughs> it keeps me interested. Hmm, the amount of possibilities that are out there of things that have not yet been built is phenomenal. I think it helps keep, you know, my imagination going, thinking of new ideas all the time. For me, and I think for a lot of Lego builders, it never ends because there's always something new to do some new challenge to do. So I don't want to get to the point where I, I am dreading having to build. That, that is a, that's a horrible place to be and I don't ever want that to happen. If I get to that point, I, I will stop. Uh, I will stop doing this business and just go right back to being, uh, just being a hobbyist again. And I would enjoy that, there's no question. You know, you just gotta find your passion and do it. You know, life's short. You know, take your time when you when you get when you find something you love to do, do it. Don't save up for it. Don't put it off till you have a you know till you have more time to do it. Get involved, do it.